Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Missal. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be pulling apart the VCE Business Management Study Design to figure out exactly what the key skills and knowledge are that you will need to have before walking into each SAC and exam this year. So let's get started. When downloading a VC study design, just make sure you've always selected the relevant copy. You can check this by just looking in the top right hand corner. As we can see here, this version for Bizman is in use between 2017 and 2021. So we're all set. I'll leave a link in the description box below to help you locate any of your future study design documents for any subject. Now we've got a contents list and in this video I'm just going to focus on the elements that are relevant to you as a student. So from the introductory and assessment sections I'm going to pull out some parts and then I'm going to run through the components of units 3 and 4. The scope of study attempts to summarise how each subject progresses over two years. Bizman is a look into the ways businesses manage resources to achieve their objectives. So starting back in units 1 and 2, it looks at how one can develop the idea for a business, how to establish it, and then 3 and 4 hits in and we focus on the day-to-day -day management of a business, and then consider how do we make changes to ensure it's successful in the future. Examiners want you to gain an understanding for how complex and challenging this is to be in charge of decision making for a business, which moves to the rationale. Essentially, this section is stating why this subject is a useful one to study. In Bizman, it's going to develop your skills and knowledge that can then be applied to your current working life or future working life. This section also mentions what career paths may be associated with the subject. So in this case, HR managers or degrees in marketing and event management. The overarching aims I'll skip past at this point as each unit then breaks this down into further detail. But as we can see with all VC subjects, it is divided up into four units of study. It's important to note that Bizman does not require students to have studied Units 1 and 2 in order to complete Units 3 and 4. In the past, many of my highest performing students were those who picked it up at Year 12 and worked consistently to master the content. The remainder of this page is really for teachers, but rest assured, if anything was to change in the study design, it would be communicated to your teacher by VCAR. This moves us on to the Assessment and Reporting section. As you're probably aware, for every unit, students are awarded either an S or an N to indicate satisfactory or unsatisfactory progress. Additionally, a percentage grade will be assigned to a student's completion of school assessed coursework for units three and four, each of which contributes 25% towards your final grade for Bizman. That remaining 50% comes from your performance on the final exam. Jumping now to unit three, managing a business. On average, students tend to complete Unit 3 content and SACs a bit over halfway through Term 2. You'll then complete Unit 4 by the end of Term 3. Unit 3 generally takes longer because it's got a larger volume of content. The keywords I've highlighted in this introductory paragraph are specifically found in the content for this unit. Additionally, in Bizman it's important to note that students are expected to provide their own examples and reference contemporary business case studies in their work. Contemporary here means that they have to be no more than four years old. So if you're really wanting to use the release of the first iPod in an answer, unfortunately, you're about a decade too late. Each unit is then broken into subtopics or areas of study. Unit 3 has three areas of study, whereas Unit 4 only has two. The study design includes a brief introduction to each of these and then goes on to list the key knowledge and skills that must be prepared for that area of study. I strongly recommend numbering the key knowledge and dot points, as these allow you to track your notes and progress accurately. When completing questions and notes with my class, we always label them with the relevant dot point number. For example, Unit 3, Area of Study 1, dot point 9, refers to official and real corporate culture. These dot points are exceptionally useful when you break them down and realise that the textbooks published for this study design often include additional information that won't be directly assessed on any SAC or final exam. For example, in dot point 2, it states types of businesses, including, and then goes on to list the exact ones you must know. No more, no less. Key skills is where you'll find the task words that you can expect to be used in your subject. In this case, define, describe, apply, etc. This pattern continues for area of study two, managing employees. Again, go ahead and number your key knowledge dot points and take note that some of them actually work in pairs. Dot point three and four, for example, both center around motivation strategies. But dot point four is telling you to make sure you know the advantages and disadvantages of these strategies and this can be directly asked of you in the final exam or your SAC. 
For those looking for some extension, dot points 8, 9 and 10 here, generally speaking, are a weak spot for many students in the state, so master these to really shine in your responses. Area of Study 3, Operations Management, again has an introduction and its key knowledge list includes plenty of sub-lists, with dot points 4, 5, 6 and 7 outlining the specific strategies you must learn. When it comes to achieving an S for Unit 3, it's important to note that each area of study does not contribute evenly to your final grade. Area of study 1 is only 20%, whereas 2 and 3 are 40% each. What this means is use area of study 1 to centre yourself, but don't let a bad result impact your motivation for the remainder of the year. As far as assessments go, that sack will have the least impact on your study score out of anything you do. This leads us to Unit 4, which is all about transforming a business. Basically making and managing change to ensure a business continues to succeed in the future. These areas of study are significantly shorter in terms of theory when compared to Unit 3. However, there is generally a far greater emphasis put upon real world case studies for each of the dot points. Most schools will choose a business to focus on. In past years, NAB, Domino's, Woolworths have been particularly popular. But each school and teacher is entitled to choose whatever business they want as long as the information is no more than four years old. And it also doesn't state anywhere that the business has to be Australian. When it comes to your overall grade for Unit 4, each area of study is evenly weighted at 50%. I've also noted here that the most common form of assessment tasks is structured questions and case studies, but these aren't the only formats your teacher can choose from. This of course leaves the final exam, contributing a whopping 50% of your final grade. That's the equivalent weighting of every SAC you're going to complete for the entire year, in a single 2 hour and 15 minute exam. But don't worry, we've got the next 9 months to prepare. So that has been my take on the VCE Bizman Study Design. If you've got any questions, leave them below. Otherwise, just let me know how your first week of school has been and make sure to click that subscribe button. I look forward to supporting you through the rest of the school year. Bye.